Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the very first Insight in Conversation of 2022. My name is Phoebe Weston Evans, and I'm a research and program coordinator at ALIA. I'm speaking to you from the lands of the Ngunnawal and the Gambri people, whom I acknowledge as the traditional owners of this land. And I pay my respects to elders past and present, and I extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here um, today at this session. Um, just a little bit of Zoom housekeeping. Um, if you could keep your microphones off while the panelists are speaking, that'd be great. And um, do use the group chat to post questions um, to the panelists at any stage, and then we will try to just get to them um, towards the end. We are recording the session, so we will send a link to the recording afterwards, and you're very welcome to share that with anyone who you think uh, might be interested. But today, we are I'm really, really happy to be talking with two public libraries professionals working in NAM, Melbourne. Um, we have Brendan Eicholzer, who's the Marketing and Communications Manager at Yarra Plenty Regional Library, where he's worked for two years. Um, Brendan was previously part of the team at Alia, uh, where he edited Insight Magazine, so it's really great to have you back. Um, Brendan has created and led um, numerous marketing and advocacy campaigns, both in libraries and in the education sector. And Titian Brady is the library and uh, sorry, the library IT coordinator at Kingston Libraries. Um, she's got an interest in blending the uh, library's role as a cultural institution with new technologies to elevate diverse voices in our communities, which is um, especially interesting in the context of today's conversation. Um, so welcome, Brendan and Titian. Um, to start off, just briefly, for those who aren't familiar with your articles that were in the latest issue of Insight, could you give us just a brief overview of the background of the initiatives you've been working on? And Brendan, if you could kick us off, how did the um, Return Yourself to the Library campaign get started? Yeah, more than happy to. Uh, so the Return Yourself to the Library campaign uh, had its genesis at uh, Public Libraries Victoria special interest group meeting uh, for the library marketing professionals um, in the early stages of 2021. Uh, so Melbourne was just coming out of that serious uh, second lockdown that we had, uh, which was went on for quite a while. And we found that we had a pretty significant drop in what we wanted to have as our footfall. Uh, so I was asked by my manager the week prior to this meeting to start thinking about developing a campaign to get people to come back into libraries and to, to you know, um, get that footfall numbers back up. Um, and in the, in the meeting, we were having a discussion and we realised that this was a common problem, that we were all having the footfall issues and that um, uh, we were all being asked to do something about it. So we thought, well, why, why don't we, um, you know, concentrate our efforts, put together a working group, make this a statewide campaign where we could create collateral uh, at, at a degree and of a quality that could then be used by everybody rather than requiring each of us to do it individually. Collectively, we'd get much more done. Uh, so we started working on what the campaign looked like. Uh, somebody had the brilliant idea of the return yourself to the library you know, you know, tagline, which um, then formed everything else that we did once we worked out that we had that aha moment. Um, we then presented to um, the Public Libraries Victoria general meeting um, and pitched this idea. And we said, look, we, this is what we want to do. We've got a working group of five people. We've got contributors from you know, 20 other uh, services um, through Libmark. We want to develop this campaign, but we need funding. Um, and we asked for fifteen dollars or $20,000 or thereabouts, and we ended up with $32,000 from 27 different library services in the state out of the at that time, I think it was 49 library services in the state. Uh, so then we spent the next forever, um, next year, developing this campaign and having very stop-start launches uh, for it. Uh, we re eventually were able to release the collateral in November, uh, but we haven't really pushed the campaign because, as we all know, things change pretty quickly after that. So uh, the the real push of the campaign is going to come at the end of this wave. Uh, we're hoping that this will be the last wave, but we know that's probably not going to be the case and we're going to have to start all over again quite possibly. Uh, but the cornerstone of the um, campaign uh, that we're just finishing developing now 
is a series of 10 40 second videos uh, which highlighted each dip one highlights a different tribute that libraries offer users so there's one about uh you know tech help and access to tech there's another one about um welcoming and inclusive spaces there's uh um story times and events and activities and things like that they're all featured in these different little videos that so they're going to be at a cornerstone of our campaign that pushes the campaign hopefully across the state throughout the region and go on from there um, and it's really important from our point of view since we've been uh, this is a statewide funded campaign that we make it accessible to even the smallest of the libraries that are in victoria public libraries in victoria uh, so it's it's it is there, it's ready to pick up and go. All of the collaterals there, they just need to grab the video, share it online. But those uh, larger services who have more staff can also then take all of the design files and do what they want with them. We're not being, um, when we don't have hard and fast rules about what you can and can't do with it. We're basically saying, we've spent your money, here's all the things that you can do, go and have fun with it, do what you want. So you can pick it up and run, done, easy. If you don't have time doing more, but if you've got more, you've got more things to do. Uh, you, you can set your own goals to achieve uh, what you're going to achieve. And as part of that, our, our KPI essentially for the um, campaign is not how many people get through the door or how, uh, improved events attendance or loans or anything like that. It's purely how many library services are using the collateral uh, because each library service will use them in different ways for different goals. So yeah, that's a brief overview what we've been doing. Yeah, thank you. And I'm sure there's, you know, everyone's looking from across uh, the state of Victoria, but um, I'm sure there's people watching and anticipating this um, from across Australia. Um, and Titian, I really love the idea of the short story dispenser. Can you give us a little background on how that collaboration got going and, and where, it, where it is now? Sure. The, um... The short story dispensers were an initiative that was um, introduced by our library manager at the time, Jane Grace, and she had uh, worked in a library in the US that had them. Uh, we were quite keen to be the first in Australia to get them, but due to various delays uh, in, in the ordering process, unfortunately, Unfortunately, there is one person, one council in uh, Perth that beat us. Darn them. So <laughs> we're the best public library <laughs> to have gotten them. Um, the idea was really around uh, sharing, sharing stories in different ways and outside of the library branches. So um, trying to meet those people who don't come into the library or don't think of the library as, you know, somewhere that they um would normally come to maybe see the library in a different way to think of it as being a little bit more innovative and not their high school library from when they were a kid so um essentially the idea was that we were going to take them out to um festivals, we were going to take them to sporting events, we were going to have them in busy cafes and shopping strips and anywhere where, where we might encounter, you know, large numbers of people all together. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, this we took delivery of the short story dispensers in February of 2019. Uh, we shut down in March and uh, it was uh, a challenge to really get those out there and get them to the community in a way that um, was accessible when we were constantly going through lockdown open, lockdown open, and trying to start a new program when um, you don't know if in six weeks time you're going to be open, uh, really, I think, brought to the fore the the kind of um, momentum that is behind a library service and its programs. Um, and getting it started again was this um, a really strange level of inertia that was, um, and it just kept happening that we'd, we'd just be building up momentum, we'd get to the point where we were putting together a launch for these things and we'd shut down. And it was always being shut down very like there might be murmurs about it for a few days beforehand. Oh, we think we're going to shut down again, but there was very little notice. So trying to do anything on a long-term plan um, 
it, it did make it quite difficult to uh, have that, you know, well, who knows where we will be. And I think that's something that everyone was struggling with a little bit um, during the last couple of years, uh, particularly in Melbourne. And yeah, just the sense of uncertainty and we'll, we'll just have to go with it. And uh, if we got an opportunity, we went with that opportunity immediately because you did not know if you were going to have an opportunity again in three weeks time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, it sounds like it was a little bit, a little bit cursed. For, for all that. <laughs> three launches we planned. Three. Yeah, three. Um, it, it, this this theme um, of Insight Magazine that both of your articles appeared in is is around the theme of beginnings. And so your your um, short story dispenser initiative has had numerous beginnings. Um, and the return yourself to the library is, is waiting for its kind of its true um, beginning to be unveiled across the state. And so given it's been a very strange context, of course, the last few years, but do you feel like this, um, this particular stage we're at now, um, does that offer any um, unique opportunities for you know, another reopening or um, the actual opening, the real beginning of return yourself to the library? When you're planning a long campaign, one of the things which is uh, difficult to do is to stay relevant and to, to keep uh, having the opportunities and looking to go, yeah, this is how we're going to push it out. I suppose the silver lining is that's relatively easy when you keep reopening. You know, you can keep saying return yourself to the library because people have to keep stop coming or you've had to, maybe you've had to shut a branch and move it to click and collect because you've got staff issues like we have at the moment. Um, so there is that, you know, you can use that re-beginning of, uh, you know, relaunching rather uh, of the campaign because you've got more information to do, more, more, more beginnings, to, more opportunities for people to return themselves. So, yeah, there, there is that. It, we would have had uh, the opportunity to uh, have other ways of keeping the campaign active for a longer period of time. We've like, for example, the videos that we've got 10 videos we, we're releasing. So that's at least 10 weeks worth of content, releasing them one at a time kind of thing. Um, where that then lets us, um, you know, begin highlighting that certainly the way that YPRL is going to do it. So we're going to then highlight those attributes. Though. So the maker space and the digital, um, you know, e-resources that we have will be highlighted for a week. And so we'll begin talking all about those across all of our platforms with all of our partners for a, the week. Our story time sessions when we release that video, we'll be talking then about what YPRL does that's special about story times, whether it's digital or in person or bilingual and things like that. So there's lots of other ways that we can uh, get that consistency through it. Um, but yeah, the stop starting nature of the recent uh, recent times has been a struggle uh, to, to just get the campaign off the ground at a time that suited uh, everybody across the state. Uh, so there were times where the regional libraries were more open than the metropolitan libraries and um, probably we could have launched the, re re the campaign regionally, but the metro libraries were still just completely out and shut. Uh, so there was no way that's a regional campaign that we could launch at that stage. Um, yeah, so that's a long-winded way of answering your question, hopefully. And, and how about you, Tushin? Does this moment in time um, present any, any good opportunities or different ones? I think the biggest challenge with the current moment in time is trusting it and feeling like it is that that sense of security that yes we are moving forward we are opening up there won't be more lockdowns there um it's there's been a lot of times where we've opened with great optimism and then the world beyond our control has um just well it's beyond our control you know uh but part of that uh, adjustment where you get into all right we're just going to have to roll with it we, it's not something that we can change we just whatever whatever will be will be the flip side of that is that when you move into this state of yes we are now reopening is there is still that sense of trepidation behind it that are we going to have to flip again? Is everything going to have to go online again? Um, 
is there going to be density limits in the cafes and that kind of thing? So it's a cautiously optimistic yes. I think uh, now we really are focusing on um, our programs have restarted. Uh, there is good, you know, indications in terms of the, the vaccination rates are really high, the booster rates are, you know, really getting there. Um, I think, I think this time it will stick, but I would not like to make a prediction. <laughs> so, that sounds, that sounds probably. <laughs> yeah, Hope, hopeful, but, but still cautious. It sounds, yeah. it sounds eminently sensible. Um, Brendan, I know you um, have been given clearance to show us one of the um, gorgeous videos that are part of the whole campaign. Um, would you be happy to, to share it with us? Sure, more than happy to. Um, I'm hoping that I'm sharing my screen now. Yep. Here is the uh, Makerspace and uh, Digital Resources uh, video that uh, we've produced at the Yarra Plenty Regional Library for the campaign. That's great. There's so much, there's so much energy in there. Um, and how many people, um, and must have been lots and lots of people working on that with all their different ideas. Um, so how did the, the, the workflow end up being distributed? Yeah, so there's a working group of five uh, people uh, who are on the campaign. Um, and so there's 10 videos. So we each well, first we put out a request of who, which library services want to be part of the videos, who want to record at their sites. Um, and we got about 20 responses. And so we then picked 10 of them. Um, and then we just divvied them up so that we each had two library services hitting each of the, hitting the 10 different, um, in total, the 10 different um, uh, story beats that we wanted to hit. And uh, my one ended up being the first cap off the rank. And so what we did was we, I went away and went, all right, these are the resources that I have at our filming location. Uh, these are the things that we want to highlight that uh, library services may or may have. Uh, with mine being makerspace, is not, I, we understand not every library service has a makerspace. Uh, so that's why this video is certainly not going to be the first video that's launched as part of the campaign. So we have to think through things like that as well. But we feel like that kind of vibe that we put off is a good vibe and the creative spaces in any library space kind of thing. Um, and the re resources, um, I, I think, are highlighted well, very nicely, especially with the stick figure scrolling through the ebook towards the end there. Um, so it was, I developed that. I then went back to the working group with that uh, for their feedback. Um, and then we actually hired an external videographer and animator to do all of the professional work. And they applied their expertise. And essentially, they went, there's no way you can do half of these things that you want to do, you know? Um, and it was then working with them about what is possible in the medium, because while we're marketing, while we're library marketing people, we are not videographers, we are not animators. So when we were asking them to do things, they were just like, eh, no, that's just not going to happen. That's not going to work. So there was a lot of to and froing around there. Uh, me going first with my uh, library service, uh, I like to think that it made it easier for the others when they then went because there were a lot of learnings. And the biggest learning that I actually had was uh, around not sticking to the plan once you're there and to take the opportunities that present yourself on the day of the filming. Um, in that section, you see a love, or what I think is a lovely little shot of a mother and daughter playing Switch. Um, that was that what happened on the day. That wasn't planned. And I think it's the, the best shot in the entire segment. Um, I, the, the, uh, the mother is a staff member at YPRL. I'd done a call out uh, to, to say, hey, we'd love to feature some teens. This was 
um, just coming out of the most recent lockdown. So we weren't actually open as a branch. Uh, so we couldn't just grab members of the public people using the space. So uh, this staff member arranged for her daughter to come in and do the shots. And when they got there, we just went, do you know what would be lovely? If the pair of you played the switch and that was the shot rather than what we'd expected the, the daughter to be doing. And we filmed it. And then when I saw her, I just went, yeah, that's just, that just gives this lovely family friendly kind of atmosphere to the shot. That just wouldn't have happened if we had just set, set by the scripts and not let just that, that moment that we had take us. Um, so definitely um, that was a great, great learning. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting that um, the advice is kind of go to the professionals. Um, that's a very solid sound, uh, words of wisdom. Um, and Dijon, I wanted to ask you, because it, it's, a, it's a library and a, a kind of external corporate partnership that this, that this um, initiative is made of. Um, and so how is that, how is that kind of, um, it seems that um, Phoebe has frozen, um, something's gone awry in the Alia office. I'm not sure, sorry, what question she was going to ask, but um, I might throw to the chat. Um, and Lee has asked a question of Brendan. Uh, will the PLVN group release campaign info to statewide media, as well as through individual libraries to help get wider traction? So the there is a very limited advertising spend statewide. So the we've spent the majority of the thirty two thousand uh, dollars. So there's a little bit left off. It's not enough to do much of a push. We are hoping that uh, across the state, uh, different library services are going to approach the media um, and to try to get them in there. We have a really good relationship with one of the authors at the Guardian, for example. So we're definitely going to be pushing them. This is a campaign that we're doing. This is so great. Um, you know, do something about this. It's statewide. You know, it doesn't you don't need to be focusing on something at YPRL for this one, just kind of thing. That's the kind of traction that we're hoping to do it. I know that a lot of different library services have good contacts in different areas. You can see that they commonly get their um, articles in certain areas. So uh, that's the push there. The, the advertising spend is probably going to do be on social media. Um, in the end, it's just such a small amount of money, it would get basically no traction on any, any other medium, even radio. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Brendan. And I believe, Phoebe, you're back with us now. If you'd like to continue with your previous question. Thanks, Jackie. There was a bit of an internet glitch at Alia House. Um, I was asking, I'm not sure how much of this came through, but I was asking Titian um, with that external library um, initiative, how the different responsibilities are um, divided up and how the communication flow works with, with that. So uh, in selecting our um, retail partners, uh, we actually, I, I went to um, our, now we have a, an internal department whose name I can never remember, but uh, they deal with business innovation, um, encouraging business innovation in the city of Sydney. So um, they're all about uh, relationships with businesses, um, building those uh, those projects that uh, are really um, in innovative, and how we as a council can facilitate that. So. Um, I went to them and I said, do you know any businesses who you think would be uh, up for this? And they said, yes, we do. And they set up some, uh, some initial meetings with the, um, uh, the owners of those businesses. We had some great chats around um, how we would promote it, how they would promote it um, through our various social medias. They've got quite... Um, uh, strong social media interaction and following. Um, so they've done a lot of work around that already. Um, and obviously we put it out on all of our channels as well. Um, mostly it was um, talking to them around what the um, idea was behind the project, which was um, both 
bringing uh, more awareness about the library and what we do, but it was mostly about sharing stories and community connection. And we knew that they had really strong community links. Um, and uh, so we put them out there. We gave them a, uh, not a spiel exactly, but we spent time going through, this is what we do. Here are some brochures about the library. You'll probably get some questions about why. And, um, you know, so we, we spoke about um, Melbourne as the city of literature, um, the strength of, you know, sharing stories, you know, all of that kind of thing. And they were, they were on board and they were quite excited about it. And we were also talking about how we could uh, partner with them in events around the short story dispensers. So um, we have internal writing groups. We were going to do a, an excursion, a writing excursion. Uh, to one of the cafes where they could sit there and, you know, we'd buy them morning tea and they could have their brainstorming session, um, basking in the glow of the short story dispenser and, uh, you know, really getting their, their creative inspiration from knowing that they too could be on the short story dispenser and have their work distributed um, to their local community. Unfortunately, <laughs> because of COVID, our writing group had to go online. So we haven't actually realized that yet, but we did spend a lot of time talking about different ways that we could um, integrate library programs with what they were doing. We realized that we were running a trivia night on a Tuesday and they were running a trivia night on a Thursday uh, down the road. So between us, we had the trivia market cornered in Chelsea. Um, but mostly, these short story dispensers are fairly self-sufficient. They will email both myself and the person who is the manager of the um, cafe to let them know if there's a paper jam or if it needs its paper roll changed and the staff could do that. But mostly it was about getting them trained up to answer some questions that they would probably get, uh, discussing how the different marketing strategies would go um, on both of our sides, who would be uh, creating uh, the collateral, um, what they needed on their side for us to, you know, send them the correct branding and everything for their marketing team. Um, and then we rolled it out. And the, well, the feedback has been people have loved it. And we've, you know, seen that on, you know, social media feedback and from how many stories are being printed there hasn't really needed to be that much effort on their part. So that's one of the great things that you can kind of go, well, you'll need to change the paper roll and you'll need to, you know, maybe do some social media posts and, um, you know, you, you might need to uh, like answer some questions occasionally, but it is really, um, it's quite a hands, Yes, I can say it's a hands-off machine because we, due to COVID, got a setting on it that means that you can wave your hand. You don't even have to press a button to print a story. So it is literally a hands-off machine. Oh, that's so brilliant. It, <laughs> that's really great. And and there still might be time for people to sit in a cafe in the in the glow of the great um, story dispensing machine. We'll get um, there. <laughs> yeah, get there. Um, I'm just aware of the time. And um, Stephen Harris, our um, Queensland State Manager, um, had a question and if Stephen would be happy to un unmute and just um, say that question out loud that'd be great. Uh, hi, uh, hope everyone can can hear me. Yeah, so the, the question was essentially in terms of marketing and it was what sort of advice would you give uh, libraries, public libraries, in terms of um, how, what sort of uh, marketing works in a pandemic you know, considering that, as Taishan said, we have these up and down kind of moments where people can come in for a brief period of time, so pamphlets might work and that kind of thing. And then when we lock down, we go to the social media aspect of, of things. What, what do you think in a pandemic works well for, for libraries? Um, I'm quite happy to take the start of that. Um, so the, the first part is the, 
the hardest part, which is communicating the restrictions and things like that, that they have to abide by. We, especially in Victoria at the moment, we're doing things like vaccination checks um, and mm. that, that are required. So keeping those things simple, right? Just, just keeping them simple and making sure that they're, they're, they're as clear as they possibly can is, is the key. But the thing that I uh, put my hand up and say, I probably didn't do as well as I should have, is don't forget to still have fun with it. So whatever it is that you're doing to, to that you're promoting, like I just absolutely, especially in the midst of the lockdowns and the unlockdowns and the re-lockdowns that we went through time and time again, um, I, I was too busy concentrating on those changes and not enough about making them consumable, you know? And it was like, oh, I've got to tell everyone all of this. I've got to tell everyone all of this. And it wasn't until we had a staff member return from maternity leave and she was like, well, where's the, where's the fun? Where, like, where, what are we doing? How are we actually getting people to, to, to listen and do with it? And now that she's come back on board and said that, it's just, yeah, no, we've just completely changed the way that we're doing things. And so, like, that we did a blog post, Keeping Up With The Librarians, and it was all about all of the different changes that have been made in the libraries. And, and it was just fun. And it had a great engagement, really good outcome, solid understanding of it. And it's just those kinds of things that I slipped on um, mm -hmm. is things that I would, but they, they're my learnings, so they're the learnings I want to pass on to other people. <laughs> you know, don't just focus on what you need to do, even though you need to do it. Keep, keep having the fun, make sure you keep doing things like that. Oh, that's absolutely super advice. Tyson, how, how about you? What? I think um, in some ways with our, um, when, when we locked down, mm -hmm. um, our first uh, thought was how do we flip everything online? And then how do we make sure that people um, know where to go so I think having having it consistent was really important when as Brendan was saying everything was changing so um, if things are changing week to week um, people need to know that if they go to your Facebook page or your web page or whatever it is there will be the most up-to-date information there each time it's not moving from one place to another uh, I think also and people were very much on it. We we had um, at one point Dan Andrews was in the middle of a press conference announcing that we would be reopening, and we had someone on the phone saying, "When is the library reopening?" And we're like, "Just let him finish speaking." <laughs> and you know, then we've got to go through about three different management level meetings to try and figure out how we're going to manage all these new restrictions. Because every time there would be the announcement of the restrictions, and then it's like, okay, mm. now we have to figure out how we translate these. So um, people were hungry for information, and I think having it consistent and in we just put it in as many places as we could yeah. so we had it on the library website the library social media the library app um we were updating google we were everything we could think of um and we had the same information everywhere mm. and you don't realize how many places you have your library hours posted until you have to change them every few weeks <sighs> mm. it's a lot <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I think one of the other things was we, we actually called our members who were over 70. We had staff members who rang them to make sure that they were okay, that they knew about the services that were on offer from council. Um, did they need any library books delivered to them for the duration? And just making sure that we could keep in touch and um, check that uh, we weren't leaving anyone behind. And um, that personal touch really made a, a huge difference. And a lot of people were so grateful that, that I mean, they were a bit tickled that the library had thought of them. Um, but yeah, our home library service as a result kind of ballooned from about 30 patrons to over 300. Wow. So yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was an intense shifting of gears. Oh. That's such wonderful, wonderful advice. Thank you so much. 
Um, thanks, thanks, Stephen, for your question. And there's there's another couple of questions that I'm afraid we're just um, not going to get time to get to, but um, I'll put them to Tishan and Brendan, and perhaps we can continue the dialogue through um, through email. Um, but our time is up. It's been really terrific. Um, exciting and kind of cathartic as well and reassuring to um, talk with you all about this. Um, Jackie put in the chat uh, the links to um, the articles that we're, that we're kind of discussing um, and they'll be available as well with the recording link. Um, so thank you once again for talking with me and for your time. Um, thanks to Jackie who's been on Tech Help um, and we'll be back for another Insight in Conversation in um, April to coincide with the next edition of Insight, which is on the theme of inclusion. And if you'd like to write for Insight, um, submissions for the next issue um, open, sorry, open until the 15th of March. So you can email, email insight at alia.org.au for any um, information. So until the next time, thanks very much everybody for your time, for coming and again to Titian and Brendan and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.